Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Red Crazy here today and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about infection. So first of all, I've wrote up here pathogens. Right, now you need to know what a pathogen does. does. A pathogen is just a disease causing microorganism. So there's two types, bacteria and viruses. Now there's particular types of, of bacterial infection, if you like, and, and I've listed these here, so whooping cough, typhoid, food poisoning and cholera. You've, you've also got, got got certain infections that are caused by viruses as well, so you've got like MMR, which is measles, mumps, rubella, flu, common cold, and chickenpox. Um, so how viruses work is they get inside the host cell, and, and then they, and they multiply. They use the host cell's, host cell's equipment to multiply, and then what they do is they end up bursting in the host cell, so they release into the bloodstream. So how does our body defend itself against all of this lot? So basically we have white blood cells. There's two types, there's lymphocytes and phagocytes. Lymphocytes have specific antibodies and what these antibodies do is supposing they're complementary which means supposing they fit into the into the infecting cells antigen I'm actually labeled this but I'll label it now antigen which basically means chemical so the host cell has a particular type of has a particular type of antigen which is specific to that to that cell um, and the antibody that's produced by our lymphocytes needs to be complementary to it which means it needs to fit into it which renders this cell harmless so this cell, for example, now can't um, can't emit um, toxins, right? Because because what a lot of what a lot of infecting cells do is they try and emit toxins into our bloodstream, which is harmful to us. So, so what antibodies do is, is the antibodies prevent these toxins from like like entering our bloodstream and stuff. And the antibodies actually release these good antitoxins that that prevent this. So antitoxin. So antitoxins are also released. There's um, right. So you got antitoxins. You also got antibodies that I just mentioned before, um, which are produced by by um, lymphocytes again, which like help bind to the, the the antigen of the foreign cell. You also got phagocytes. So what happens is, um. Well, what the, the lymphocytes try to do is they try and clump these infecting cells together so you have a group of them. Because when there's a group of them, it's much easier for this phagocyte, which is a large cell, to come along and ingest these particular clumps of foreign cells. So this is a clump of foreign cells. It goes inside the, the phagocyte where particular where, where specific digestive enzymes inside the phagocyte actually digest them. Right, so, that's, so that explains to you pretty much how, how disease works inside the body. Um, you need to be aware of, of the there's certain types of that the, every every type of lymphocyte that actually has has particular antibodies. There's only one type that's complementary to this particular antigen on this foreign cell. And um, the other thing you need to know about is there's certain people like Ignaz Semmelweis. Ignaz Semmelweis. And what he said was, was he, he worked in hospitals and he told everyone they had to wash their hands. And this is basically to prevent the spread of, of like disease and this sort of thing. So Ignaz Semmelweis worked in the 19th century, which is 1800s, in case you didn't know. Um, so he was one of the key figures you need to know about. Um, you also have Robert Koch. Uh, and what he did was he... He came up with the first like petri dishes, uh, and he sort of analysed analysed what happens to um, he analysed what happens to to, to um, harmful harmful cells and stuff on on petri dishes because basically you can grow bacteria and stuff and certain cultures they're known as um, on petri dishes because they provide them with nutrients so they usually use nutrient agar on petri dishes um, and what sort of helps helps the particular organism grow that you're growing um, so you can actually study it in more detail. Um, and then you also have Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming worked around 1928, and what he did is he came up with the first antibiotic, penicillin. He actually accidentally discovered it. Cause what he did was he left open a window, and some and some, some, some germ cells that, that, that some germ cells came in, and they. Um, and they it, and they enabled this particular type of mold to grow on his agar jelly, um, well, which is which, and this mold was called penicillin mold, and is used to produce penicillin, which is an antibiotic. Now, antibiotics I haven't discussed with you 
that much. An antibiotic is something which is used against the bacterial infection. And that's very important. You can't use them against viral infections because these viral infections, the vo once the virus is inside this particular host cell of our body, how are the how are the, these antibiotics that he discovered, how are they going to actually get into the cell? The answer to that is they're not. So basically we need to have an alternative method of of like of like essentially immune immunizing ourselves against this particular um against viruses. So the way we do this is by vaccination. Vaccination. Right, so basically what happens in vaccination is you get a dead or weakened form of the particular um of the particular pathogen which is injected into our body and what this does is it stimulates our immune system, it stimulates our lymphocytes to produce a particular type of antibody which is which will fight against this particular infection. Um, so that's how that works. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it, hope it sort of enlightens you a bit about how our body defends against microorganisms um, of these particular types of like bacteria and viruses. Um, right, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.